My buddy that I went with was in a band, um, very amateur, but we never toured Disneyland without checking out every live entertainment. It's really part of your ticket is what I try to tell people is that, you know, you're, you've got this live entertainment and Disneyland was meant for the whole family. So um, even though there were no thrill rides when it opened, um, you know, grandma and grandpa don't want to go on Space Mountain. If you can uh, sell one of these live shows, pit, give your best pitch for your favorite one that people need to go see. Uh, um, let's begin. Uh, let's talk about your connection to Disney. Why did you uh, seek the path of becoming a Mouse Planet writer? Um, well, I've always loved Disney. I'm from the Midwest, from Lincoln, Nebraska, to be specific. Um, so I was equidistant to both parks, both Disney World and Disneyland. So uh, it wasn't 15, wasn't until I was 15 year old, 15 years old, that we uh, took a family trip to visit a family member and got to go to the park on Christmas Day. I just remember. Oh, wow. I'm gonna be remembering a lot as we talk. <laughs> so um, let's see. That's such a long question, but I'll, I'll do the short version, and you can yeah. ask things. Um, I ended up in San Francisco as an adult, so very close and um, had a really good buddy up there that loved Disneyland as much as me. So I made sure I, I we were in the parks usually twice a year. So um, when I moved to Southern California about five years ago and bought an annual pass, um, I saw that Mouse Planet was hiring writers. And since I am in the entertainment field, I applied for the entertainment writer mm -hmm. and I wrote an article on the Disneyland band um, which was brand newly refurbished for the 60th anniversary. That's and cool. that was the article that got me the job at Mouse Planet being the entertainment writer. Yeah, you seem to like really go into the nooks and crannies of things. Like you, you like, like you're, well, I'm saying like you really want to go see the Dapper Dan's. Like that's on your to do list when you visit the parks, which I think, uh, I think you've told me like it's a, it's a usually overlooked gems you like to focus on. Yeah, um, it's interesting because, you know, um, everybody always talks about what would Walt do and Walt would hate this and Walt would mm -hmm. hate that. Everybody, you know, always speaks for for someone that's not here to speak for themselves. But, you know, the park was opened in 1955. So entertainment was what was a huge aspect of it. And it was a huge aspect of people's lives. And that's something that Disney's never dropped. And that's something that makes it different from other theme parks is that um that, that they've got the uh entertainment um you know the east the west coast has hollywood and the east coast what with all the broadway actors and whatnot um some they, they they do all their auditions in new york city in florida also so they get a lot i mean they get the best inter entertainers period mm -hmm. period yeah, no, that's really interesting. I didn't know about that. So like, since the idea is, I think what you're saying is since they, the technology wasn't as advanced, the, the, the performances had a lot more of the attention at the time and they were, they were a lot bigger part of the park. Yeah. Well, definitely it was a bigger part of, um, people's lives too. And, um, you know, the magic of Disney I, I, as now that I have even a more of an eagle eye when I go watch these bands is that, you know, you bring your kids to Disneyland and they have a visceral response to live music. One of the best examples was there's a show called Mickey and the Mickey and the magical map, which who knows mm -hmm. if it's going to return after everything. And um, it's mostly a review with good old fashioned Disney songs and it's all canned music, which means it's been recorded yet. A guy comes out during um, with princess Tiana and actually plays the trumpet live. And a small child, I mean, one at the most, viscerally responds, can tell the difference between canned music and something live. And that to me just, that, that, that to me is the perfect example of uh, how it hits the heartstrings. Absolutely, that makes a lot of sense. A I dramatic, mean, that's really, it? it's these one of a kind experiences that you get in the parks that I think what makes Disney special. Actually, weren't you telling me that your mom was uh, one of the first people that went to the parks or something? She went in very early days. Well, that was the connection we had. Uh, my aunt moved there in 1955. And uh, I thought about this uh, looking through the pictures before this podcast was that she went in 1959 because back then the pictures had the little, little, uh, they stamped the year that they were developed. So it could have been 58 because sometimes you had 
filming your camera. No pictures of any human being, just pictures of the castle and and the uh, old uh, chicken of the sea pirate ship that's no longer in fantasy land. Terrible pictures too. Um, couldn't get the whole ship in. And she never told me that she went because, you know, I would have been doubled down on begging to go to Disneyland as a small kid. <laughs> Wait, your mom, the, it was a secret trip your mom took? No, it was in 1959 before. I'm not oh. that old, Brian. <laughs> so my point God, was- I didn't I, run the numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's fine. I don't hold you <laughs> responsible. Um, uh, but my, that's my point is that, um, yeah, she got to go on a family trip and uh, never really told us till, you know, once we got there is when she told us, well, I was here in 1959. Ah, <laughs> oh, holding out. What holding do out. you mean you were here? Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, man. The uh... And I have to say too, when I came down from San Francisco, this was not a forced um, job at Mouse Planet being the entertainment writer. Like, oh, I better go check out the Dapper Dans. My buddy, I have lots of friends in San Francisco that are in bands that I've always, you know, showed up for. Um, and uh, my buddy that I went with was in a band, um, very amateur, but we never toured Disneyland without checking out every live entertainment. It's really part of your ticket is what I try to tell people is that, you know, you're, you've got this live entertainment and Disneyland was meant for the whole family. So um, even though there were no thrill rides when it opened, um, you know, grandma and grandpa don't want to go on Space Mountain. If you can uh, sell one of these live shows, pit, give your best pitch for your favorite one that people need to go say. Uh, which is hard right now as the parks are slowly opening up. They're, in, they're not back fully with entertainment. They have the small groups. I would really truly say Dapper Dan's is mm -hmm. the starting because you can't enter Disneyland or Disney World and they're both back. So I have that fact. I want to since you're doing a podcast, I feel responsible <laughs> to tell people what's going on. The Dapper Dans are back in both parts. The boys Everybody. are back in town. They are. Um, you know, four-part harmony, barbershop quartet. These are professional musicians. It blows my mind that they um, rotate them. Originally, the Dapper Dans were a, a, a quartet of the same. You know, they had two days off and they were, the, they were a quartet that they hired. Mm -hmm. um, you know give a old cast member on here to tell you exactly how that worked. But now they have many guys and they, they perform every single day. They might have days off. Don't quote me on that. Again, the entertainment schedules are changing, ever changing as the parks are both reopening. Um, but they are on main street that, that four part harmony is amazing. They're singing mostly Disney tunes, a few, you know, sweet Adeline type songs, mm -hmm. but they mostly do Disney tunes and they do seasonal tunes they do Christmas tunes and at Halloween, you know, for example, I know they have done a, this is Halloween, the opening song from nightmare Ooh. before Christmas. And Oh my God, there's so much information. Uh, it's the 20th anniversary of the nightmare before Christmas layover at the haunted mansion this year. So, Oh, Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. That's been 20 years. Uh, Walt Disney wow. world does not do a layover of the haunted mansion. Um, Wait a second, is it one of those that Walt they don't want to touch something like they no. want to keep one the original way Disneyland has more local visitors yep. so to have things new they generally um, are more accepting of that the thought behind it was at Walt Disney World some people save up for a giant Walt Disney World vacation and they want to see the Haunted Mansion as oh. Walt envisioned it and you are correct Walt Actually, he passed away before the ride was finished. So mm -hmm. it was finished without his direction. The Pirates of the Caribbean was his last ride that mm -hmm. he had full um, connection with, or I should say attraction, as the cast members said. 